Hey everybody, recently I photographed the Spaghetti Nebula, and this was one of my biggest challenges so far in astrophotography. I started off by capturing about 30 hours of data with the Optolong L Enhanced filter from a Bortle 2. Then I purchased the Optolong L Ultimate filter and gathered another 12 hours worth of data. And this brought up a problem. How do I combine both sets of data for the best results? And that's what I'm gonna show you in today's video. Initially, I thought, well, I could just stack both sets of data together at the same time for one final photo. But this isn't necessarily a good idea because the L Ultimate filter is considerably darker than the L Enhance. So it's possible that when you're stacking the data together, the software will recognize that the L Ultimate data is much darker and it might completely exclude it from the stack. And even if it was able to combine all that data into one final image, the colors would likely be all mixed up because each filter has a different color balance. Not to mention the fact that if you took flat frames, they're only gonna correspond for one set of data. With all that said, I actually did try to stack the L Enhance with the L Ultimate all at the same time, and it worked fine. It didn't exclude any files during the stack, and then I was able to color correct the photo with SPCC. So if you wanna keep things simple, and both of your filters are fairly similar, in my case, they're both dual band filters, you can give this a try. But the better approach is still gonna to be to stack both sets of filters separately, and then we can combine them later using pixel math. Again, in my case, I captured about 144 photos with the L Ultimate for exactly 12 hours worth of data. I would go through and stack this, then I would clear everything out and grab all the light frames from the L Enhance filter. This would give me just over 32 hours of data which should be pretty good. Next, I would open up the master light files for each image. I'm not gonna be using the auto crop though, just because for this data, it was very difficult to get the proper composition and the auto crop will ruin my photos. So I'll just go with the normal master light file. As you can see here, my composition was not exactly consistent from night to night over the span of the last three months. That's why I cannot rely on the auto crop for this workflow. And if I auto stretch both photos, we have the L enhance image on the left and then the L Ultimate on the right. And this is what I was getting at earlier, is that each filter has its own color balance, and if you try to mix it all together during the stacking, it'll likely screw everything up. So if you're following along, the first thing you should do is rename both photos, that way you don't get confused. I'll call this one Enhance, and then the other one Ultimate. The next step is to fix the color cast with SPCC. And we have it easy because we can actually find the L Enhance as well as the L Ultimate right from the drop-down menu. Once you've applied SPCC to both photos, they should be color corrected and you'll have basically what you see here. At this point in the workflow, I'd recommend running Blur Exterminator with correct only. This will just confirm that both images have fairly sharp stars. We're almost ready to combine both photos for a cleaner result. But before we do that, I wanna note that the Optolong L Ultimate filter has a bit of a weird gradient from green to purple whereas the L Enhance is much more even from side to side. Another thing to pay attention to is that the composition is slightly different between each photo. If you look closely, the nebula in the L Ultimate filter is almost at the very edge of the frame. That doesn't look very good. Whereas with the L Enhance filter, we have a bit more breathing room for a better composition. So what you wanna do is look between each photo and determine which one has the best composition. That'll be our reference frame for the next step. For this, we'll go to our Process Explorer and look for star alignment. This is a very powerful tool. And what we'll do is start by understanding that the reference image needs to be set to view. I mean, you can do file, but view is much easier. And then all we have to do in that case is drag the file name from whatever one has the better composition. Again, for me, that's the L Enhance. So I'll drag the name tag over, drop it into the reference image. Then I'll drag the L Ultimate as my target image. That's all there is to it. If you click on the circle button, it should now line up the L Ultimate with the L Enhance. There we go. And if I put this over the L Enhance and toggle them back and forth, you can see that there's no difference. You need to make sure that both photos are lined up properly before you continue on. At this point, you could blend the two together, but I'd recommend doing a few additional steps. First, I'm gonna run Star Exterminator and get those stars out of the way because we don't really wanna blend them together necessarily. 
Both of my photos currently look a bit pixelated, so I'm going to turn on the 24-bit preview, and that should solve the problem. And while we're looking at the starless photos, I want to point out some important differences. The L Ultimate filter has a lot more oxygen data in it than the L Enhance, which I find surprising. See how much better the blue nebulosity stands out compared to the L Enhance? It's a night and day difference. And keep in mind that the L Ultimate image is only 12 hours compared to 32 hours. I guess that just goes to show you that if you spend more money on a filter, you might get better results. All right, so at this point, we could blend both images together using pixel math, but I still have one more thing I want to do, and that is fix the gradients in each photo. Because I did not take flat frames, I have this purple to green gradient in the L Ultimate image, and then just kind of an overall blue tint to the L Enhance. The problem that you're going to run into if you're in a situation like me with this black border is that if you run Auto DBE or Graxbird or anything like that, it's going to place points in this dark area and completely screw up the photo. And this is going to make everything much more difficult than it needs to be. So hopefully you don't have this problem. Again, the issue I have is just that my composition is very tight and I can't afford to lose anything towards the bottom. Anyway, to make your life easier at this point, I would run Auto DBE or Graxbird or whatever tool you prefer to fix the gradients. And then we can move on from there. But if you have this dark area like I do, then the auto tools aren't going to work and you're going to have to do DBE manually to overcome that problem. For the ease of this tutorial though, I'm not going to bother with that for now. I'm just going to leave the gradients in the image and we'll blend them together. Although, as I said, normally I would try to fix that before we move on. We are now ready to blend both photos using the pixel math tool. The equation is very simple. We're going to use the mean operation. Then we'll type in parentheses, and then it'll be image one comma image two, whatever you've called them. In my case, that's enhance, and then ultimate underscore registered. This is case sensitive, and if you miss even one character, it's gonna fail. So just double check that you have the equation typed in properly. I'd also highly recommend clicking on destination and creating a new image, that way you don't accidentally overwrite one of your original photos. Then we'll click on the square button to create our blended image. And if we auto stretch it and turn on the 24 bit preview, there we go. We should now have the best of both. And so, what I want to do is maybe first compare this to the L Ultimate data. We'll take a look up close over here. And what we should notice is that the blended photo is considerably cleaner than the standalone L Ultimate because we've incorporated an additional 32 hours worth of data from the L Enhance. And that's what we see. The image on the left, this is our combined. It's a lot cleaner. I will say though that the blue still doesn't come through as nicely in the combined image as it did in the L Ultimate, but if I just capture more data, that should help. Here's another example, and you can see that it's clearly a lot cleaner on the left compared to the image on the right. Next, let's compare the combined photo against the L Enhance image. And what we should notice in this scenario is that the combined image has more of that blue oxygen data. It's fairly subtle, but there's definitely an improvement in the combined data. And that's really all there is to it if you've got data from two different filters. You'll want to stack both filtered images separately, bring in the master lights into PixInsight, do some basic processing to clean them up, and then use pixel math to blend them together using the mean operation. Now in my scenario, I still have a lot more work to do unfortunately. I have to fix the gradient and I also have to fill in this gap at the bottom and on the right. So if you find yourself in a similar situation, here's what to do. I'm gonna start by running dynamic background extraction on the photo just to clean up the gradient. This will take a while, so I'll just speed this up. All right, I've now finished DBE. Looks a lot better, doesn't it? Next, I'm gonna run auto DBE on the L Enhance photo because this has the remaining portion of the image you need to incorporate into the combined photo. As I noted earlier, I could have run Auto DBE before blending the two together, but I was just worried about this black border becoming a problem. Auto DBE has finished, but I don't really like how blue the photo still is. So I'm gonna go back to the dynamic background extraction that it did, and then I'm going to prevent it from doing the normalize. I think that will allow us to retain more of the red color. Yeah, there we go. That should blend more naturally with the image on the right.
Next, I'll run Noise Exterminator and clean up both photos because they are still fairly grainy, unfortunately. And I'm sure there's a way to do this in PixInsight where you can just overlay the bottom part of this photo onto this image, but to be honest, I'm not sure how you do it. Therefore, I'm gonna take these photos into Photoshop where I'm much more comfortable doing blending. For that though, I need to stretch both images and then save them as TIFFs. I'm sure somebody will leave a comment down below though saying, oh, it's easy, just do this in PixInsight. So you might wanna read through the comments and see what they have to say. But if you don't mind using Photoshop, then again, we're gonna save these as TIFFs. I'd recommend doing 16 bits to make it easy on Photoshop. Then I'll open up both images. This will put them in separate workspaces, but we just need to copy one and paste it in with the other. It really doesn't matter what order you do this in, but I think I'm gonna copy the Ellen Hands data and then paste it on top of the combined data. Then I'll add a black layer mask to the enhanced data by holding down the Alt key, or it'd be Option if you're on a Mac, and click on the layer mask button. From here, it's very simple. I'll take a white paintbrush and just paint in the bottom and the right where we had the missing area. I'd recommend going a little bit above the border as well. Try not to paint in the nebula. You'll see why in a second. Okay, now in my case, they actually blend together very naturally. Although when I was doing this originally, the blend was not nearly as good. And what I did in that case is I used levels or curves, whatever you're more familiar with. And if we add this as a clipping mask to the layer directly below it, then I can adjust the brightness value that way this blends as closely as possible. But in my case, it's already very close to begin with, just maybe slightly darker. Then I'm gonna click on the layer mask itself and blur it out with filter, blur, Gaussian blur. You need to watch very closely though that when you're blurring this, you don't see a straight line because if you blur it too much, you will see that problem. See how if I blur it too much, it just essentially negates the whole effect. We're just trying to get a little bit of a blur. That way there's not a harsh edge. That worked for most of the image, but down here, you can see that flat line. So I'm gonna undo the blur, make sure I'm on my layer mask with a white paintbrush and just paint a bit closer to the nebula. And now when I blur it, nobody should be able to tell. With our layer mask blending properly, you might wanna go back to your curve or whatever you're doing and continue to play with it very slightly until it blends as naturally as possible. You can also add a vibrance layer, for example, if maybe it's too colorful or not enough, but I gotta make sure, again, I'm using a clipping mask. That way this only targets the L enhance layer down here. All right, it's not perfect, but we're just kind of doing this as a demo today, and that's more or less what I did on my own off camera, but we went from that to that. And from here, I would start doing my global adjustments. I'd make that background way darker, bring up the nebula. That already looks a lot better. Then I can do maybe some selective colors. This is all stuff I cover in my deep space course if you want to learn more. And that's all I've got for you in today's video. Before we go, I just want to do a very quick recap to make sure we're all on the same page. If you're trying to blend multiple filters together, the first step is to stack them all independently. In my case, I stack the L enhanced data, then I stack the L ultimate. That's kind of step number one. Step number two is to bring them both into PixInsight and do some basic edits like SPCC, Blur Exterminator, and maybe even a gradient correction. Step number three, is to align both photos to the same composition. So find the photo that looks the best, make that your reference image in the star alignment process, and then you can align your other photo to that reference image. From there, I recommend running star exterminator on both photos to get those stars out of the way. And the final step is to combine them both using pixel math. The equation is mean, parentheses, image one, comma, image two, and that's all there is to it. For those of you that were in a similar situation as me, you'll want to then blend the combined image back with whatever one had the better composition to fill in those gaps along the edges. Hopefully you don't have to do that step though and you can just crop it and be done with it. All right, well, that's all I've got for you today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another video.